Welcome back, everybody, to the uh, Union After Hours. As always, my name's David. I'm Jordan. And tonight, we're excited to bring uh, Francis on, on our episode tonight. Um, we're going to talk about pairing cigars. Uh, Francis is one of the tobacconists here at, at Union Cigar. And uh, Francis, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what it is that a tobacconist actually does. Yeah, so um, one, of the, one of the, honestly, it's probably the more fun parts of my job, right, is um, getting to try a lot of stuff. Um, and then figure out what's going to go with what. Um, being a tobacconist, I think it's, it's a really specific role and it's a specialized role within the industry. Um, when customers come into the shop, they want recommendations or they don't know what they want. Um, and so in these cases, um, what the tobacconist is, is the experience there, right? So okay. for anyone when they're trying cigars, um, there, there are important things to do while you're smoking cigars. Um, it's important to find what you like, but it's probably more important, especially when you're starting off, to find out what you don't like, right? Um, and so what the tobacconist has done is they've done that for you. Um, they've smoked a lot of cigars. They know what they don't like, and they know what types of people don't like given their tastes. Okay. So you describe um, what's, what sorts of foods, drinks, um, flavors that you like. Okay. Um, and a tobacconist has developed their palate such that they can explain yeah. this cigar would match for this. Okay, so let's talk about somebody who um, just today sure. walking down the street out here in, in Gettysburg and says, you know what, today's the day I'm going to take up cigar smoking. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they walk by uh, Union Cigar here at 5 Baltimore Street. Yeah. They walk in and you say, hey, can I help you find anything today? And they say, I have no idea what I'm talking about, what yeah. any of these yeah. things are. Right. So, so, so how do you find the perfect cigar or at least the right cigar mm -hmm. for someone to start with that is that has never done it before? So this is this is one of the more fun things also. So when, when somebody comes in and they want to try something and they have no idea what they want, it's great because they have no biases, they have no inclinations. Right, yeah, no no sort of preconceived notions slate, about what, right? yeah, what's good, what's um, bad. And sometimes I've found it's, it's easier to, to show somebody or teach them fresh rather than if they have some sort of idea of what they should be looking for. Um, it keeps them more open-minded. Okay. So uh, with that, it's what types of food do they like, right? Um, do they like strong coffee, right? These are the, sort of the, the signal questions that you can ask um, that when you get the answer, it says, okay, this, they would prefer something more full body, something chewy, something leathery, something oily in a smoke. Um, yeah, that goes for food and drink as well. Okay. Also, and what about, one of the things that I like ab about here is that we do have a few tobacconists that are on staff. Um, because I like being able to come in and I'll say, you know, uh, well, like when Jordan and I come in on a Wednesday, one of the conversations we have a lot is, let's try something new this time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let's try something we haven't had before. Um, and one of the things that we appreciate about you guys is if we're about to go try something that you know we are going to hate, yes. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can turn us mm -hmm. off from and be like, hey, guys, look, you're, I know you go, you're more into the, the medium to full-bodied Nico Puro type stuff. Uh, you're probably really not going to want to try that infused grapefruit. You know, not that we sell anything like you know crazy like sure. that here, but you know, if if we're looking at something that is way off of, yeah, of what we're well, normally I mean, used to, we've we've worked really hard, and I I feel like we should be proud of what we've done because we've we've trained our staff, and I'm really happy with with our team. We're we're a really strong team, um, and we we focus on giving the kind of attention to the customers. We like having these personal relationships with the customers. Awesome. Right? We like knowing, okay, we got this batch of cigars in. Hey, I know such and such. Uh, I, I know these groups of people. They like these types of cigars. I'm going to recommend this the next time they come in, right? Or, um, yeah, it's it's that kind of, the special kind of care and attention that I think is one of our strengths. Okay. Um, and the kind of strength that you can't, or might not be it might not be as common in other shops. I, our, as a shop, we try to maintain this kind of intimate, familiar mm -hmm. um, setting. And awesome. I think it's fun. I think it's good. Good deal. So how long have you been here? Yeah, so it's, I've been here so since the new ownership. I've been here from the beginning, and then prior to that, uh, with uh, the previous ownership, um, I was working here for um, about two years before. So in total, it's been about three years for okay. this. Um, I've, I've I've enjoyed uh, cigars and tobacco, don't get me wrong, uh, long before that. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so in my position as um, events and special projects manager, I sort of had the luxury of being able to help the tobacconists on staff develop their palettes, um, help plan the kinds of events and make the pairings that we do for the events. Um, yeah. It's awesome. a lot of time. 
Well, that's fun. That, that is exactly why Jordan and I, when, when we've been discussing content, right, is who, who are we going to have on? Because they're not going to want to talk to he and I every night. You know what I mean? <laughs> as, as awesome as I think I am, I'm sure Jordan has a, a you know, a, a good sense of himself as well. Nobody wants to hear from the same people, much like we don't want to smoke the same cigars all the time. Right. 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 You don't want to have the same drink all the time. So what we decided <clears throat> was Jordan's a bourbon guy. Mm-hmm. I'm a beer guy. And you're a coffee guy. That's right. So, oh, don't uh, get me wrong. I'm yeah. a bourbon and beer <laughs> right, guy yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? who, who isn't right? I mean, by the time this whole thing is all said and done, we're all going to have had beer, coffee, and bourbon and cigars. Mm-hmm. You, there's really not a big downside yep. to, to what we're talking about. But one of the things we decided was we wanted to each. We kind of wanted to test you a little bit. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I brought a beer that I like. Uh, I brought Line and Kugel Summer Shanty. And Jordan, what did what did you bring? I brought uh, Old Forester bourbon. Okay. Right. Yeah. Great. And I believe you're doing the quartermaster blend. So I'm doing the, the house blend, quartermaster, and by like a coffee. So I'm okay. doing it as a, a long black okay. or, or an Americano. I haven't decided yet. All right. So we didn't. We told you what we were bringing ahead of time, mm-hmm. and we left it up to you to decide. That's right. What That's right. what cigars? Yeah. I've right? got I've got options. Right. Okay. So this is something I like to do in the shop too. Awesome. Where customers come up. They tell me what they want. They tell me, hey, I've got this bottle. We are, in fact, BYOB, so it's, this is not an infrequent thing. Um, where a customer will say, hey, I have this bottle of bullet bourbon. What does this pair with? And then so I'll pull a bunch of cigars out, give them options for the, what they'd like to smoke, and I've done that for us as well. Yeah, Great. awesome. Yeah. So what goes into those decisions? Since you said there were um, three C's that you keep in mind uh, when yeah. pairing a cigar, um, yes. do you mind walking us through those? Yeah, so I, I didn't, like, find this anywhere this is just sort of talking with like experienced members of the industry to figure okay. out how to do pairings right and so um, what I've gathered is there's complementary flavors there are contrasting flavors and then there are competing flavors okay. generally when you're doing a pairing you want to avoid competing flavors unless you're in the mood for punishment um, um, you what's what's really what's really interesting is when you can get into contrasting flavors and um, complementary flavors, right? Um, and so we'll, we'll be able to walk through the cigars um, that I've chosen as options and the each types of flavor profiles that are gonna be pairing well with uh, each of the drinks we have chosen. Okay, um, all right, awesome. Thanks for joining us again, <laughs> uh, welcome back. Uh, so we've got everything set up. We've got uh, my Line and Kugel Summer Shanty. Uh, Jordan, refresh my memory. Old Forester. Old Forester, yep. which is a bourbon. Okay, good. Not like a, anything special, like a 16-year-old? No, uh, no, no, it's no. It's not no. the Prohibition Eight, era. It's no, oak, right, they do have the sure. Prohibition era, but no, it is not okay. that. All right. Didn't have it. And we've got our Quartermaster blend yep. from I'm going with the Americano. All right, awesome. So I am going to now let you take the lead, Francis. Awesome. You show yeah. us what you've so, got yeah. with all these and why and Let's see. whatever you start... think we need to know. Yeah, so I, I'm pretty happy with what I chose. You guys can tell me if you're happy with it after the fact. Sure. Um, yeah, so... With each one, which each, with each of these these cigars that I chose, we have varying bodies, we have varying strengths, but we similarly uh, I've kept in mind um, the the contrasting and the the um, help me out here complementary complementary flavors. flavors. All right. Um, I'm gonna just go through the line of Kugels first. So with this, sure. I have so with line of Kugels, um, we have a lot of citrus notes, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so naturally, my thought was, okay, let's let's pair with something uh, with cigars that have like zesty, sort of spicy flavors, right? So that very much is complementary, right? Okay. Um, something that would be contrasting is so when you have zest with zest, when you have like lemony with lemony, that's mm-hmm. that's right. Yeah, it gets um, a little much sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So a complementary would be uh, maybe like a little sweet with the zest, right? A little sweet with the, the or a little spice with the, the citrus of the beer. Um, so yeah, I, I have the Grupo de Mestro A. Chapman. Um, so it's a nice Connecticut, very creamy smoke. Um, it's not zesty and it's got a very smooth, uh, uh, mellow spice to it, which I think um, contrasts very well with the, with the Summer Shandy. Okay. Um, I also have the Quintessence, which, which bumps up the spice. Uh, but the Quintessence probably is the, the uh, mildest out of all the spicy cigars from San Cristobal. I think they have fin- a fantastic line. Um, and the Quintessence is probably the mellowest, but it's still distinctly there. Um, and then lastly, I have the Laranja uh, Reserva, okay. which is the, the Laranja Brazilian uh, wrapper. And so that one is noticeably uh, uh, zesty, which I think uh, 
uh, just complements really well yeah. together. It, smell, it smells really good, and I'll be honest, I already made the choice. This is the one I'm going to try yeah. for tonight. The other two I've had, I like the H. Upman and the San Cristobal I had a few weeks ago right. also really well, um, which kind of leads me into, into one of my other questions. Is there a way, like as you're looking at these, like from a newbie kind of a standpoint, mm -hmm. you know, like um, someone who knows they like Habano Oscuro wrappers? Sure. Can they look at something on the shelf they've never had before and kind of get an idea of what that's going to yeah, taste like? Yeah, so they can do exactly that, right? Okay. They can get an idea. It's not going to be for sure, right? So the general rule, and this is, this is general, it's, there's so many exceptions, is, um, and this is sort of like what's talked about in the industry, um, the idea that people talk about is the darker it is, the stronger it's going to be. That's unfortunately not always, always the case, and so it's not the best rule to go by. Okay. Um, certain... Uh, if you if you see like a really dark, oily, toothy wrapper, it's probably going to have right. some potency, right? But the the sorts of things to look out for are um, the kinds of leaves. So rather than the color, if you see a band and it says Lajero on it, it's probably going to be potent. Okay. Um, right. And so um, <clears throat> again, this is where this is where uh, having a tobacconist. Sure. Is helpful. Yeah. So let me, this is one of the things that I, I was told when I first got into cigars, mm -hmm. and I have since found out is inherently false. Yeah. Right? But I'm, I'm curious if anybody else out there has ever heard this and, and what your thoughts on it. The wrapper is important, mm -hmm. right? Not the band, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, sure, this draws your eyes in, like, oh, it's right. bright and yeah. shiny and embossed. It's probably cool. You know what I mean? But the actual wrapper, I was told at one point, the wrapper on a cigar is like the dress on a woman. There's mm -hmm. very little indication of to what's happening underneath. It doesn't mean anything. Oh yeah, that's not. You know true. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah well, you not know, true. And in yeah. the beginning, you know, it's like, well, yeah, that makes sense. It's just one leaf. You know what I mean? That's wrapped around the whole thing, and there's how many others in here? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But yeah, a surprising amount of. The yeah, but the, really yes, but the more I've gotten into it, man, it's just it. The wrapper makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. It's one of the first things I look for. Is if it's got. I am not a Connecticut shade grown guy. Mm -hmm. If it's a Connecticut mm -hmm. shade grown wrapper, the only way I'm smoking it is if it's somebody gave it to me for free. Yep. You know what I mean? Like we're sitting around somebody's house. Like well, yeah, I've you been know, told like the best, the best cigars, uh, at least the best tasting cigars, are always free. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. My favorite whiskey is the free one. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, favorite beer, whatever's in your cooler. If I, you know <laughs> what I mean? If you're on, on the fishing trip or at yeah. somebody. But anyway, we're gonna way go down a rabbit trail on, on all this other stuff. Let's I keep. Mean, so my thing is, Jordan, what are your what are your thoughts on, uh, like when you first got into the uh, the the joy of smoking cigars? Sure. Um, what mistakes did you make? Um, so, I mean, just some things that you already touched on, right, yeah. was um, I was trying to pair, you know, a uh, super dark, like, triple Maduro yeah. with yeah. a light beer, yeah. like a Pilsner yeah. or even like an IPA, right? And it just... So it, there you get the competing, right? Right. And it just, yeah. and it just didn't go together. Um, even when it comes to pairing cigars with maybe what you're eating, Yeah. right? Yeah. Um, AI had an, out, uh, an outdoor Brazilian steakhouse dinner once, Yeah. you know, and... Pairing the right cigar there. It's like pairing a wine, mm -hmm. too, with your meal as yeah. well. Um, so, and then over, over time, I learned what I liked and, you know, what paired well with, you know, what I was drinking or what I was eating. And, yeah. So, right, because the wrapper does account for, I think it was 30 to 50 or 60 percent of that flavor. I have such a hard time quantifying it. It's, it it's makes huge. a difference. Yeah. 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 It, it, it makes an absolute difference. I mean, it's like lipstick on a pig, right? Just because <laughs> you put, you could, you put lipstick sure. on a pig, it's still a pig. It's, you know what I mean? You put a really good wrapper on a crappy cigar, mm -hmm. it's still a crappy cigar. But if you put a really good wrapper with really good binder and filler, mm -hmm. it absolutely makes makes the difference. Yeah. yeah. Let me let's get through. So yeah, um, with the bourbon. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, with the old Forester, there's a there's a nice sweetness to it, but there's still that spice there that I that I like in bourbons. And so um, what I chose for you was the Lique Bravada number nine. Um, the uh, Romeo y Julieta Reserva Real Nicaraguan Puro, um, and actually it's not a Nicaraguan Puro. I, it, it's, it has Nicaraguan tobacco, but I don't think it's a Puro. But then uh, also the Diamond Crown Maximus. So mm. each, we have varying body types, right? But um, we have distinctly through is sort of this, this nice sweet spice that I think is going to complement really well with Old Forester for each of them. Okay. Um, the uh, Maximus is probably going to be the choice. spiciest. Um, the Reserva Real is going to be the, the mellowest. I, I think it's a great cigar. And then the Liga Pravada is probably going to be the most potent. Okay. Yeah. Well, and I, I generally lean towards the more full-bodied yeah. Yeah. Mm. rich cigar anyway. So somewhere between the <clears throat> Diamond Crown and Liga Pravada. That's right. Yeah. Perfect. 
for yeah, not, yeah, a, not a bad for. place to be. No. Yeah. Well, whichever one you don't smoke, I'm taking home. So, <laughs> no, now they're on my pocket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These are mine. Right? Yeah. All right, so, so what'd you, you pick the, with the yeah, coffee? The yeah. Quartermaster. I mean, so I've got a real soft spot for the Quartermaster. Um, Travis out of Lenka Coffee, he he worked, he really worked close to yeah, us to figure absolutely. out what do you guys want out of a house blend. It is excellent. Yeah. Um, how many times, uh, just, just a sidebar story, yeah. when he was in here and we were figuring that out, mm -hmm. how many times did we go back to that and he's like, Here's nine scoops. Oh, yeah. Here's yeah. nine and a half. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was a whole afternoon yeah. of a few of us and him in there. So, I, yeah, I didn't mean yeah. to. Then, so it was the, the phone calls great. back yeah. and forth, figuring out, okay, this is five seconds more on the roaster. You know, this is yeah. 10 seconds less on the roaster, and it made a difference. We went through several test batches um, to figure out what we wanted, and we did not like some of the ones. Before. No, no, um, we did and not. So, that's, yeah. with all the work that he put in, we're very happy with. Um, Absolutely. We're, we're very proud of our, of our blend. So, um, it was it was fun to find. Okay, what what cigars are going to pair really well with this? And so, um, the way we made it is it pairs with a lot of cigars. It pairs very well with a lot yeah, of cigars. Absolutely. But so these ones I picked across the range to show how many different types of cigars this is going to pair with. So I got the ash and white label, which is very light, you know, very very delicate in flavor, and yet it still does pair very well. I have the Don Carlos um, from Arturo Fuente, um, which is probably one of the most cedary cigars that we have, but it still pairs very well. And I have the Lenox from La Flor Dominicana, um, right. which is which is a very nicely full-bodied cigar. Um, it does not, it does, I found that you don't want to let them age for too long. I think one to two years and they get diminishing returns, but okay. uh, fresh, there's certainly, there's certainly a nice potency to them. Now, out of those three, would you say, because um, some people no, don't necessarily care for something as dark and strong as Lenox, so mm -hmm. first thing in the morning, a oh, cup yeah. of coffee, yeah. you know, which, which out of those three would you say are like oh, a good morning I would, cigar? I would go to, so it depends on if I need to wake up, right? Like if, okay. if, yeah. I, need, if I need a kick, yeah. I'll go with the Don Carlos uh, for okay. something that, that wouldn't be too, too overwhelming for a morning cigar, but honestly the, the easiest certainly would be the Ashen White Label. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Very good. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not going to... I say we go for cutting a light, guys. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 But that, that's the whole idea behind the shop, right? We still need to choose. Uh, what are you thinking? I'm thinking... Choose the, uh, wisely. Uh, oh, really? I thought you were going to yeah, take the That's the one I was going to take home if you didn't uh, see that. No. no. Yeah. I figured wow. Dave had his eye on it, so... Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. Just trying to deny me the satisfaction. I'm going to go for... <laughs> I'm between the Dunk Carlos and the Lenox. <laughs> I really like this. This this does have a like a sweet orangey kind of um, citrus smell I, to it. You know what? For this one, I think I prefer the straight cut, which we have down there. Fantastic. Oh, beautiful. You were saying that? Yeah, I said that the, the aroma on this is it actually is a little citrusy and a little like orange yeah. peel. I, I'm I'm looking forward to it. It's funny that you chose these when you set this up. I remember thinking I almost bought one. Can I steal that from me? I almost bought one of these the other week when we were oh, when we were just hanging out. So I'm really I'm really excited to give this a whirl. Mm. So I always do I always do a nice cold draw. Oh yeah. After the cut, just to just to get the flavors. Yeah, of, we've talked about that, and we talked about doing mm -hmm. like you know this roll between your fingers and an you don't want to crunch it too hard though. Yeah yeah yeah. No, I usually just real soft. But if you can hear, mm -hmm. you know, like Rice mm -hmm. Krispies. Might need a little bit more time in the humidor. Yeah. All right, and then this always begs the question, right? Like, what do you actually light your cigar with? Like, is this okay? Yeah. Like some people say, use the matches to light the cedar spill. Oh, sure, and, sure. You know, you can't light it. There are a lot of options. You can't light a cedar spill with a butane lighter. and You know, yeah. you yeah. know what I've come to realize? <clears throat> Do what you want. Exactly. It was my $12. <laughs> yeah, you know what right. I mean? If I want to bite this in half and throw it away, it's mine. I'll do that's that. Right. But. I am. Um, so um, Ernesto Perez Carrillo for EP Carrillo, he, um, I saw this one just fantastic video of him on the way he, he lights his cigar. And so when I'm, when I'm lighting my cigar and I really want to enjoy the ritual of lighting a cigar, I'll do this thing where I take three matches um, and yeah, this is how I do it. So. It's great doing this indoors also when there's no wind, that but you the just... most intense light match I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I like to just gently toast 
Um, never, never directly in the flame, just mm -hmm. hovering over it. Gently toast and turn. Um, I think we actually might lose this one. Oh, this is a nice little trick. Could you, could you give me a little fire on that, just, just with the torch? Oh, yeah. Well, and see, and I always, if I'm, if I am lighting with a butane lighter, I will always toast first. But right. lighting with the cedar, I generally don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So I do this. The, he, he did this three match process hmm. where he doesn't even. Um, pull on the cigar until all three matches have been, have been lit. Hmm. And you always, again, yeah, smoke, give it, your, give it smoke a minute your cigar. I mean, smoke your cigar the way you want to smoke your cigar. If you right. like the taste of fresh match, <clears throat> yeah, um, yeah, you like the taste of cigar fresh like burnt you know? match head in your um, mouth. I go, prefer, <laughs> I prefer to let the, the magnesium burn off, right? Mm -hmm. um, and until I place the cigar over. Yeah, like one of my one of my favorites. I like the the spicier stuff, so I I really like the uh, the Arturo Fuente short story. Oh, I have those at home. Yeah, so the short stories are great. Um, I think I, I think I wasn't gonna get out Fuente without, Fuente. without <laughs> laughing. It's yeah. Fuente for anyone who might be watching and want to correct us later. It's Arturo Fuente, the the Hemingway short story. That's right. Um, so the Hemingway has a just a beautiful Cameroon rapper on it. Mm -hmm. And Cameroon is one of my favorite rappers, but it's also probably the hardest rapper to work with. Um, it's so delicate and it's prone yeah, to, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's also prone to, it's either disease or mold. So when mm. when it's good, it's good. Yeah. Um, and yeah. And with Fuente, it's always good. Mm -hmm. that, that should be their new catchphrase. Mm -hmm. With Fuente, it's always good. good. Yeah, so notice I haven't even pulled yet on the cigar. Um, I gotta say, man, you I, I've used your services quite a few times since coming here. Mm -hmm. um, I've asked you to pair things for me before. You've never steered me wrong. And and Oh, it's gonna happen one day. Yeah, I mean I yeah, I mean I hope <laughs> not, but you never know. But Don't so far like this. <laughs> I'm telling you, buddy, this uh this summer shanty with this Laranja is actually really, really good. Oh yeah, like, great. yeah, yeah. Are you yeah. are you getting the the citrus notes? Yeah, definitely. And they're kind of kicking each other off. Like mm -hmm. you get a little bit of the orange zest off the cigar, and just as mm -hmm. that is starting to die, another pull of the pull of the lime and kugels. You get the the lemon and the citrus back from that. It's it's really quite good. Good, good job. It seems like you know what you're doing. Is Johnny paying you enough here? <laughs> you think that I, smells great, by the way, for not having even really pulled on it yet. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. And so what's what's great is. <clears throat> You get to experience the aroma and the room note of the cigar before you're even pulling on it. If when you just really take your time. And so with this, after I've I've toasted it with three matches, then I'll pull with the cedar still. Okay. And this is what I think we talked about this in our first video, right? Like cigars themselves aren't addictive, right? But what right. what you do find yourself is addicted to is the experience. Correct. Is the yeah. experience of smoking a cigar. Right. Right. So it's I mean that was a whole experience. What. Oh yeah. Yeah, what right. Francis just did. Uh, I've here. never seen that before, but no. now I gotta try it. Yeah, yeah. Now it's gonna take me. I mean, my <laughs> wife won't like it. It's gonna take me an extra ten minutes every time I go out to smoke a cigar. Now, <laughs> well, I mean, that's right. that's one of the benefits, right? You're when you smoke a cigar, you're not rushing yourself. Mm -hmm. You're forced to take your time, contemplate, think about what's going on, or or better yet, not think about what's going on, right? And just go with the ritual that is just so ingrained. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to buy a box of these probably before we leave here tonight, <laughs> right? So I can already kind of envision myself sitting on the back deck already with a hot cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. and, and these notes are really good. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's fresh. It's clean. Yeah. It's as much as I like the, I mean, the Liga Pravada number nine that you have over there for Jordan. I've smoked, I don't know how many of those. The, the T-52s, the Papa Fritas, mm -hmm. Feral Pig. I love Nicaraguan cigars. Yeah. Dominicans are fast becoming some of my other favorites. Mm -hmm. But I love those powerhoused, ultra spicy, almost punching you in the face kind of cigars. Yeah. But it is really difficult sometimes to make one of those like the first thing in the morning. You know what I mean? Because it yeah. sets you off for the rest of the day. But this is a nice lighter blend. I've always said I don't like light cigars. Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, you just got to try. It. Yeah, you man, have yeah. to try. And that's it. why we had you yeah. on. You know, for my first, you know, milder cigar out of the gate, this is this is really good. I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's like it's like what we were saying when we were starting off. Um, it's, it's important to um, try as many cigars to see both what you like and, importantly, what you don't like. Um, and it's also important that once you've smoked a lot of cigars, to maybe go back to the ones that you didn't think you liked at first. 
mm. because inevitably your flavor palette will change. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I can't tell you how many cigars I went back to thinking I did not like this at the first go. Um, and then I try it again, and I'm just blown away with the, sure. mm-hmm. the things I'm picking out. Um, also, just depending on my mood, sometimes I don't want a type of cigar at a certain time, so it's good right. to try it again. Yeah. yeah, one of the tricks that, that I've told new, newer cigar guys and gals to try is journaling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So one of the things I, I just bought this cheap like dollar ninety nine journal from mm-hmm. Walmart or something I forget exactly where I got it from, but every cigar that I had for the first six months, year, whatever, I took the band off, super glued it onto a page, and just no nothing really official like trying to keep up with Cigar Aficionado magazine or anything crazy like that. Just did you like it? Yep. If yes, why? If not? Yeah. Why, you know, Jordan, you, you do anything like that to keep, keep track of what it is that you like? I do. So I'm, as I think we mentioned the first episode, I'm an IT, I'm a nerd, yep. right? I don't like paper. <laughs> I don't like I'm paper. I'm a nerd. I'm a geek, whatever. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't like paper. I don't deal with it. So um, I actually just um, keep a digital spreadsheet, you know, and I have the columns marked out by, you know, binder, um, filler, wrapper, origin, mm-hmm. you know, manufacturer. Um, I rate it, you know in 0.25 increments yeah. and yeah. when I smoked it, you know. It's super um, detailed what the weather was like. The, <laughs> yeah, right. So yeah. I actually have the same thing, the, but yeah, I, have, I have a little book with my with my labels in it too, because okay. I, I do happen to like the paper on labels. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, I do that and it's, yeah, it's not carrying around a tablet or anything. Super can, we always have our phones on us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, these, absolutely. These days, yeah. Right? So yeah, it works out. <clears throat> yeah. So now Francis, what about Father's Day is coming up, yeah, right? So yeah. I've been I've been prepping my wife and kids, leading into that. You know, be like, hey, listen, um, I really yeah, like yeah. this will be our fifteenth Father's Day celebration. <laughs> so that's the box of cigar yeah, anniversary. That's the box of cigar anniversary, <laughs> right? So let's you know you you get that that wife, girlfriend, significant other, mm-hmm. you know, comes in and says, you know, my husband, wife, boyfriend, whatever is really into cigars. I want to buy him a box. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what, what, what are what are you going to ask that person? What should they yeah. know when they come in to talk to someone um, in the shop? So, yeah, if they if they smoke cigars, it's really simple things. Um, ask if they like strong or or lighter. Right. So you're talking about strength. Um, you're talking about. Honestly, I wouldn't even get into the body of the cigar. Just start with strength, because that's the okay. first thing that can sort of um, set it off. If if somebody doesn't like particularly strong cigars, and they're given strong cigars. Luckily, they do age well. But um, so just, it's good to know what kind of strength, um, and then also just what kind of food they like. Okay. Because we can pair off that. What kind of what kind of beer they like? What kind of liquor they like? <clears throat> we can pair easily. All right. Now, and, and I'm curious, how do you handle the, or how do you approach that customer that you know just right from the off you can tell that oh uh, they've been smoking for. 30 years, oh, they're yeah. like, you know, they're, they're all these like, tells. Dave, I only smoke this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is that how yeah. I sound? Yeah. Right. <laughs> but, you know, it's like, right. I, I like, I like, um, you know, Drew Estate. Mm-hmm. Where are they at? You know, do you just yeah. show them where they're at and then yeah, you walk so away from or do you point out what's I, new? Um, I, I like to do something similar to what I did here, where it's, I'll, I'll pull out the Drew Estate stuff that they like, but I'll also uh, maybe pull a couple other things from the shelves that would compare, um, because the, it's 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 an educational and also just a, a light experience that we're looking for, um, where it's great. We, I love seeing when people know what they want. That's fantastic. Mm-hmm. But I also don't want people to not see the market right now for what it is. Boutique blends are just exploding oh, right now. Absolutely, it's, it, we're yeah. like the wild wild west of cigars. Yeah. I feel you like know? every every month there's like another yeah yeah something to try and out. Honestly, there. what's great yeah. is um, as far as as far as uh, price points, a lot of these boutique blends are at really reasonable mm-hmm. price points. We're really proud to carry as many boutique blends as we do. Um, Absolutely. And, and just we, recently, oh yeah, go ahead. yeah, I was gonna say just uh, our, uh, a couple events ago, um, we had Francisco Almonte in, um, and he was he was wrapping the cigars in front of us, um, and Excellent. we're yeah we're really we're really happy both to yeah. have him and and um, to carry his product. And we've got you were there. Well, we we actually have some really really uh, exciting news about yes. this yep so yeah actually so um shortly thereafter uh john the uh owner of union cigar met with uh, francisco monte and um we're the main lounge of union cigar um, is actually becoming the dbl lounge 
Um, so Union is now home to the uh, second DBL lounge mm -hmm. uh, in the country. So awesome. yeah, very exciting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and what does DBL stand for? Uh, Dominican Big Dominican Leaguer. Big Leaguer. Yes. I know. I love it. I love. I mean, that's, that's Francisco. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. It was. I love that guy's attitude when he came, He is yeah. just. He is all about how can I make you and your cigar smoking experience a better one. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. His heart is in the industry. Absolutely. He's got a passion for it. It's classy a family guy. line. Yeah. He's a classy guy. He's great. I'm ecstatic, ecstatic that we signed on with those guys. Mm -hmm. um, we did a DBL in our last one, right? There's a DBL Amarillo, yep. Bellicoso, mm -hmm. excellent. Oh, Bought okay. a box of those before I went home that <laughs> night. Loved it. Loved it. Yep. Um, I think we're, what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to say goodnight to you guys out there uh, in Cigar World. We're going to sit and finish up these drinks. That's right. Finish up these smokes, have some good conversation. And uh, thanks for coming by, and we'll, we'll see you next time at the Union. Thanks, everyone. See you guys.